Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how HTMX unlocks faster web page reloads versus MPAs or multi-page applications. So previously we explored performance differences between HTMX and MPAs using my latest side project as a experimental guinea pig. Now we found that HTMX provides snappier page updates by avoiding the reload of many static assets. And in this post, I wanted to dive in a little bit more into what's actually changing between MPA and HTMX reloads to allow for these performance differences for the exact same content. I think it was good to use like a real side project to kind of show these numbers, but I also think some of the like general themes and principles maybe got lost in the specificity of the side project. And so here we're trying to like generalize um, what was happening. So to give you more of like a, a mental model of this. Okay, so the basis of this is basically that HTMX unlocks partial page reloads. And this is its big unlock, the real thing that makes it useful. And so, you know, multi-page applications and really the way that we traditionally built websites for a lot of time, and you know it when you see one of these because they're kind of like old and sluggish, like think of like a DMV website or like a state website or maybe like an old blog or e-commerce site, you know, you kind of know these sites when you see them, they feel slow. And these mostly feel sluggish because they reload the entire page whenever something changes. So, you know, you fill out your form and you click the button and it like takes a long time to reload or those sites where you're afraid to um, do anything weird or hit the back button on a form because you know it won't be saved. Like we know these websites exist and we know to be careful around them because they are sluggish and this is kind of why. And so what this means is that when something changes, it basically needs to do a full network or it needs to do a full reload, right? Which requires the full network request for all of the markup and the assets. Um, it needs to do the full browser refresh, parsing everything that was, that was done, even when only a small thing has changed and needs to update. And so what HTMX does is it allows any element to send HTTP requests and decide what to do with the resulting HTML response. And ultimately what this unlocks is these partial page reloads. If only a small thing needs to change, then we only change that small thing. We don't need to refresh the entire page. We just change the part that needs to change. And generally this helps makes these websites or server-side rendered websites and pages that are actually still built the same way as those old sluggish websites, you know, these MPAs feel much faster because we don't have to reload everything. We only reload the stuff that actually needs to reload. You can read more about this in this post. And so that's the basics. And so now I wanna kind of dive into like HTMX partial reloads versus MPA full reloads. Like what's actually happening on these loads to make them different? And so I think we should start off by saying that initial page loads for MPAs and HTMX are essentially the same. They're really just web pages and web pages all kind of load the same way. So, you know, the first thing we might need to download is the markup and this describes the web page, usually HTML. And this is kind of describing like what it looks like, what assets it needs, any scripts it needs to run. You know, like if you look at any web page, it looks exactly the same as this, right? It's got some markup, it's deciding, you know, what is actually included. I might have some script tags somewhere. Maybe these are running scripts internally, but they all kind of look the same. Like this is just how you describe the web. And so it needs some sort of markup. Next thing it has is the assets. So what are the dependencies, if you will, of these, of this markup? What things does it need to pull in to run? And then some sort of scripts. I'm calling this scripts, really it's like dynamic loading. Um, I'm not sure like a great way to say this, but like, you know, you get your dependencies in and often websites will want to do some things. And this could be like just simply running analytics, which is non-blocking, but maybe if you're running a spa or something and needs to run some client side logic, you know, there's all sorts of things, but those kind of need to happen after the scripts load um, or the assets load so that it can actually run them. And so, you know, way oversimplification, but generally this is what's required for like a web page to load. And so I wanna make it clear that like HTMX is not doing anything different, right? Like it's just a little asset that gets loaded onto the page. It's really not changing anything about the way the web works. And so at the end of the day, you know, for the initial load, we have to load in everything because that's what a web page is. We have to load the web page and so nothing changes. Now the difference though, is when we get to these subse subsequent reloads. And so, you know, Here's like a diagram of like maybe a simple web page. And you know, most web pages, you know, there's several different layouts, but they all kind of look the same, right? So if this is your browser window, you might have a few components, maybe you got like a nav bar, maybe you got like a sidebar with some ads or I don't know, 
if you have an app like navigation, I don't know what's going on here. And then you got like the main content, right? And so here this example is kind of saying like, well, what if we wanted to update C3? What do we have to do in these different kind of paradigms? And so on the left here, we've got the what was is required to update C3. And on the right, we've got HTML. And so here, you know, we can see that like for an MPA reload, we kind of have to reload everything. So we only would need to update C3. But actually, we've got to update you know, the first component, second component, third component that we actually need. And then we're also going to reload all the assets we have. And then we're also going to, you know, rerun all the scripts we have. And this is because there's just no mechanism currently in normal HTML to do partial reloads. And so if we want to update one part of the page, we got to reload everything. And so obviously this is like objectively slower um, because we're doing a lot of unnecessary work, but also it has some risks a bad UX, like losing your place on a page or the white flash on styled content issue where maybe we load, start loading in markup or dynamic things before we actually get the styles, before we actually run some JS that maybe affects the way that these are loaded um, and things start jumping around on the page. And this makes it feel subjectively slow and sluggish, um, which often perception is actually what kind of drives our view of performance about a specific technology or a specific um, web page. And so yeah, the MPA is going to be loading up the full markup because it doesn't know how to do less than that. And then it's going to reload the full assets. And I do want to call out that this is often loading from cache. And so we would expect minimal network overhead from this because you're probably on a subsequent load, you've already have all of these cached. But I do want to call out that there is some browser parsing and loading overhead um, because the browser does need to recalculate these things to make sure that the, the end result is reflecting the new markup that it might have gotten, the new, and then, you know, any interactions between those two things. And so, you know, a lot of people say that like, oh, actually there's no difference because there's a minimal network, um, and that's true. Mostly cash, so probably fine. But we can't deny that there is some overhead going on here. And in my, you know, granted, very naive experiments, it seems like the overhead is is noticeable. And then finally, whatever scripts you have to run on the front end. And this is because like, you know, in the same way that the browser needs to reload these things because it doesn't necessarily know how it's going to interact with the markup and what the end result's going to be, it definitely doesn't know what the script's end result is. And so often, especially for client side things like spas and stuff, this is where a lot of the load time actually is because it really needs to reprocess the whole thing. Okay, and then what HTMX allows you to do is declare these actions that only require partial reloads. And so if you come back up here, you know, we're trying to update C3. And so we only need to return the markup for C3. So we can kind of avoid these things. What this does is it actually allows us to avoid kind of the, the scripts um, section. We're basically saying like, hey, you don't need to rerun those assets. They're the same. Um, so don't even bother pulling them from cache. Don't even bother reparsing them. It's just the same web page. Nothing's changed. And so we can skip all of this stuff. We don't need to pull in new CSS. We don't need to pull in JS. Most of the time, I mean, you could build your app so that it returns some assets. Like I could imagine maybe you're loading in and a dynamic image in that case like yeah the asset would still need to be re pulled from cache or um, pulled from network so it is possible that you do need to pull this but for the majority of web pages you won't and so we just skip this whole step altogether and then of course you know there in the same way there might be some script loads like i don't know your page might need to change multiple things and so maybe this runs but generally again this is going to be much smaller than the actual full um, initialization script and so you know we have it here but generally this is way smaller than this this is way smaller than this and so we're just doing less work you know in the htmx thing because we're targeting what's reloading we're targeting what needs to um, rerun to make this work rather than just blindly reloading everything. And so yeah, generally this is just a lot smaller amount of work. We're just gonna have less network load because we're only loading some, a portion of the markup that needs to come from the server. There's gonna be less browser load because we're not reloading all these static assets. We're just like, hey, it's good. We already loaded them, don't do anything. And then there's less script execution because you know generally these have already loaded. Um, so we don't really have to do anything. And so this is like less work per action and thus it makes these you know experiences feel a lot snappier. Okay, so that's generally how like I understand it working. Now, how much does this actually matter? So, you know, in my previous post, we basically found the difference between HTMX and MPA loads to be around 300% for non-blocking and around 20% for blocking. And, you know, these are like hand wavy and it's hard to generalize, but um, 
The 300% non-blocking is because on my page load, we're doing a lot of analytics and stuff, which is like non-blocking deferred scripts. But these are things that are still loading in the background. And so it's doing more work here. Now, if you only look at like blocking scripts, um, it looks like it's really only a 20% difference. But what's interesting is these blocking things were loaded from cache. Um, but there's kind of like ghost time between when, you know, it loads it from cache and like maybe a few nanoseconds and when the page actually loads. Um, and so this is kind of that overhead that's kind of hard to measure. So 20% is kind of an eyeball. Um, but there is this overhead and these blocking scripts even when everything is cached. But again, you know, this, this is very hard to generalize. It's really heavily dependent on how each web page is set up. But generally we can say that HTMX will always be noticeably faster because it's simply doing less work. And so we just accomplish less work faster than more work. That's just how it is. Now, I would argue though that the real performance difference that we get between these two approaches is really the perceived or subjective performance rather than the actual or objective performance. So I think the perceived thing just outweighs the actual gain. And I think this experience feels much faster and smoother because we do get this kind of modern UX. So we're only loading a part of the page we're not risking losing our page or place on the page and we don't get any white flash or unstyled content and overall this makes the page feel faster makes it feel more like a spa more like that modern ux we're used to on the web nowadays and this is largely the gain and the difference in perception of these technologies also i think that you know hate os um hypermedia as the engine of application state unlocks a lot of interesting design patterns that beat out MPAs in terms of dynamism and efficiency. For instance, like when we're reloading a page, like on an MPA, we kind of have to start from scratch unless you're like memorizing the session stuff on the server. Um, but with Hato AS, it's all just in the browser. And so we can kind of grab that. It's like client side state that's like not client and it kind of like has changed with the user. And I think this leads to a lot of interesting, easier to write, more dynamic experiences that are kind of hard to replicate with an MPA, um, which overall makes the whole app support these kind of modern interaction patterns better, but not fully formed. And that's like, a, you know, a whole nother talk. So, so we'll skip that for now. So anyway, I've been building most of my side projects with HTMX this year, and I've really enjoyed it. It sped up my development and allowed me to explore many new ideas for how to build on the web, which I found pretty fun. Question for you is, what's your take on HTMX versus MPAs? Why do you choose one over the other? If you like this post, you might also like why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty MPA and complex like spa. Might also be interested in the ham stack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap. And finally, what it's like to run HTMX in production stories from experienced software engineers. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.